What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and this article from the Washington Post. Now it may look a little different than a lot of others because I'm using Internet Archive because uh, one, I don't want to give this article clicks and two, because I don't want to pay for Washington Post. So I'm using this archived link. Um, but it is from the Washington Post. The latest Star Wars film satisfies the right wing. Will the left start trolling? And then this sub headline here, don't expect a new fandom menace to emerge this time around. And this article in the Washington Post is all about the fandom menace. So I figure we have to take a look at it, right? <laughs> Let's get into it. Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker leaves theaters soon. Critical reception was middling, box office receipts collapsed, and in below those of The Last Jedi and Rogue One, a standalone film. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for reminding us all that it did finish below Last Jedi and below Rogue One. Um, it's not done yet, though. Could still get over Rogue One. But right-wing trolling of the film... What is that? What do you think right wing trolling is? Do you think when I when I make a video criticizing the rise of Skywalker is that trolling? Do you know what that means? It was mild compared to the backlash against TLJ. This latest movie avoided that ire by moving Star Wars politically right. Oh God! So Lucasfilm has replaced its right wing troll problem with a left wing. Probably not. Compared to the previous films, TROS slided fans with less visibility in fandom media and fewer ways to monetize their criticism. Right-wing anger. After TLJ, an online campaign took issue with the film's feminism, leftism, and diverse casting. And also, god-awful storytelling, not respecting what came before it, and people coming out and shitting on fans on Twitter. Yes. This right-wing critique was so durable that it has a nickname, The Fandom Menace, which even Lucasfilm uses. Very true. They do. Thank you, J.J. Abrams. Anger at TLJ became a business. Popular anti-TLJ videos on YouTube have millions of hits, translating to tens of thousands of dollars for their creators. Right-wing personalities sell Fandom Menace apparel. Entrepreneurs raise $50,000 in seed money for an anti-TLJ comic book, and almost 10 grand for a multi-volume history of the fandom menace. Um, and again, an anti-TLJ comic book. Well, it was actually if you, well, never mind. Who is this film for? Many observers see The Rise of Skywalker as an apology to TLJ haters. Of the 53 reviews by top critics, 44 describe the movie as a reversal intended to win over the fans that dislike TLJ. Um, that's true. You can clearly see it's a departure from The Last Jedi because of how poorly The Last Jedi was received, not just by the fandom menace, but by a lot of other people. And you can tell that's why there's no, there's not, that's why there's not as much interest in this movie because TLJ ruined it for so many people. TRS invites the perception that it's made with conservative white and male audiences in mind. After suggesting there would be a same-sex relationship in TROS, filmmakers included two women kissing in the background of a scene, really the forefront of a scene, a moment easily censored for overseas markets. Yes, Disney likes to virtue signal. We know this. TROS nearly eliminates the character Rose Tico, who was the focal point for right-wing hate after her large role in TLJ. Rose Tico was a meme. She was not a focus for right-wing hate. It was the entire movie is garbage. It doesn't have anything to do with right wing. There's plenty of leftists that don't like The Last Jedi either because of how poorly of, or how poorly made it is. Like, the story doesn't make sense. It breaks lore in Star Wars, causing them to then break that lore again in the next one. It's, I, I, it's difficult if you can't see that. It's not just right wing people that don't like The Last Jedi. One critic illustrated all this with a list of TROS moments that undermine TLJ's commitment to diversity. For example, TROS explains that certain feats by women in TLJ were only possible because of help from men or sheer luck. Yes, a universe-breaking, a universe-breaking holdo maneuver they had to explain through luck. Because if you don't, it breaks fucking Star Wars. God, I don't... Ugh, all right. Uh, a smaller... Uh, where is it? Uh, despite all this, a left-wing trolling campaign against TROS is unlikely. Fandom politics and the nature of internet media will probably curb the anti-TROS backlash. Left-wing? What, what do you think trolling is? I don't think you understand. 
for this article that you spent so much time writing about internet culture, it's tough that you don't realize what trolling is. How old are you? A smaller fandom platform, the most visible Star Wars fans media is made by white men. For example, until 2018, the Star Wars website included links to fan podcasts, which I collected for past research. 38 of the 58 shows had male hosts. Only one person had a person of color as a host. Again, these people counting how many males, counting how many black people there are. That, that's what they do. That's all that matters to them. Some of these fan media outlets support the TLJ backlash. For example, Rebel Force Radio, one of the oldest outlets, pivoted to cater to a right-wing audience. And going back to what just what they said a paragraph ago about diversity or, or whatever, a person of color, you mentioned you criticized a comic book from world-class bullshitters. Do you have any idea um, who that podcast is made up of? I don't think you do. Maybe you wouldn't be bringing diversity into it. But that's the thing, it doesn't matter to you unless they believe the same as you, right? Who wrote this thing anyway? We'll find that out, it doesn't really matter, she's irrelevant. Fans who feel slighted by TROS's politics will not have a comparable platform. Female, non-white, LGBTQ fans control fewer fan outlets. They also experience more online harassment, discouraging them from engaging with the larger fandom. What are you talking about? Less powerful groups of fans are also especially likely... It's, it's funny they're saying this now. What was it before? What was it before Rise of Skywalker? Fan and menace doesn't matter. You're a group of small people. You have no power. No one's listening to you. Now look at this crap. This is the Washington Post saying that less powerful groups of fans are especially likely to practice transformative fandom, creating new things rather than trying to control the direction of official Star Wars media. For example... Fans disappointed with TRX have already created fix-it, art, charity fundraisers, and memes celebrating Last Jedi's and favorite characters. TLJ and the... They're talking about Raylo art, probably. Uh, TLJ and the right-wing media. Right-wing, anti-TLJ content was helped along by non-Star Wars media as well. Dismay with TLJ was part of coverage of right-wing cultural grievances in outlets such as Federalist and National Review by alt-right influencers, including Ben Shapiro and Jack Posebic. Alt-right influencers. Ben Shapiro is Jewish, but you're calling him an alt-right influencer. Maybe you don't know what the alt-right means. Websites specializing in right-wing pop culture expanded their Star Wars coverage to capture anti-TLJ audiences. These platforms also help right-wing Star Wars outlets grow a new audience. There's no comparable left-wing media ecosystem where anti tiros feelings can thrive and be monetized to the same extent. Um, you know, that's true. Because people don't watch that for a reason. If it's all this left-wing progressive stuff. Uh, and that's kind of true. Um, you know, because it's almost like there's not a market for that because there's not people that listen or care. Strange. Bullying the detractors. God, how long is this? All right, it's almost over. Thank God. Bullying the detractors. Last Jedi Backlash included extensive online trolling by TLJ defenders. By contrast, since TROS, the major trolling incidents have targeted fans who were disappointed with the films. Um, not now, Firefox. I have to use Firefox with Archive. A fandom menace account manufactured a hoax claiming Raylos were sending death threats to the TROS director. Oh, this is about Data Racer. It has to be. Uh, manufactured a hoax claiming Raylos were sending death threats. No, Raylos were sending death threats. We have the tweets. What are you talking about? At, you, listen, if you want to make up all this crap, you can come up with better things than that. We all saw the tweets. <laughs> Oh, Raylo is a fan of the controversial romance between Taros propagandist Ray and Ben Solo. BuzzFeed credulously reported the claim. No, uh, BuzzFeed's trash, but every once in a while they report real things. Another troll used, troll used a temporary sock puppet account to provoke one of Taros' stars, John Boyega, into a social media confrontation. Boyega made a series of attention-grabbing posts. A sexually explicit joke. Oh, he said laying the pipe. Heaven forbid. TROS spoilers. A swipe at Raylo and a video of himself fighting internet detractors. And yes, that was an epic legendary moment by John Boyega. Not an ally, but uh, someone who is speaking his mind, clearly. 
a troll succeeded and created negative coverage of people disappointed with TROS. I found 31 headlines in Google News about Boyega's fight with fans, 15 of them congratulating him for taking on the film's critics. The incident also provoked a wave of retaliation. A study of almost 50,000 tweets related to this social media fight uncovered tens of thousands of threatening and abusive messages directed at Boyega's critics, especially Raylo's. Yes, threatening, threatening messages saying Raylo's are weird. Um, that is what counts as abuse. That matters to the future of Star Wars, even though neither Boyega nor Raylo is likely to be in future films. I would say that's pretty unlikely, yes. When I reviewed the tweets from that study, I observed the word Raylo has a de facto secondary use as a derogatory label for a female fan. What? Tweeters mocked women who, were, who questioned Boyega's other remarks by calling them Raylos. The fandom menace already uses Raylo's generic epitaph. Even people in Lucasfilm orbit slip into complaining about Raylo's to dismiss women's criticisms. Dislike for Raylo's become an all-purpose argument against women's participation in fandom. What are you talking about? Look, I will say, there are women who think that all women are Raylos. Jenny Nicholson came out with a tweet saying that, and she got blasted by a lot of people in the fandom menace. That has nothing to do with women. Listen, Raylos are... If you want to ship this thing, that's fine. It's And I've said that before. It's when you get into this weird thing where you're kind of fetishizing an abusive relationship, you're sending death threats to a director, you're doxing Adam Driver and his wife because he's not with Daisy Ridley in real life, that's weird. There's plenty of Star Wars fans out there that are women that don't get called Raylos. Raylos get called Raylos because it's weird. <laughs> what? Again... I don't understand where she's coming with this. That kind, This kind of trolling is not motivated by affection for TROS. However, it will probably quiet many critics of the film. The backlash ends. Outrage against the latest Star Wars has not matched the campaign against TLJ. Given the middling success, it's possible most viewers preferred TLJ. However, TROS is perceived as a film that slighted less powerful fans in an effort to please conservative fans. That may be enough to hold backlash in check. And it's Bethany Lassina. She's an associate professor of political science at Rochester. Wow, what an incredible waste of time, Bethany. But thank you for putting the fandom menace into the Washington freaking post. Um, it's quite nice of you. Quite nice of you. Um, this is garbage. It pulls a lot from that trash media or a medium article that's been going around the past couple days too about where they went this in-depth study about the fandom menace and about Raylo and all these things and you know it's just it's kind of a joke it's just funny that you know like I said earlier that a, a year ago months ago before TRS has come out people are saying fandom menace is irrelevant no one cares about you now you've got these pieces in the Washington Post talking about the fandom menace JJ Abrams is talking about the fandom menace um, I don't know why. It seems like this Raylo thing has set it all off. There's been so many articles in defense of Raylo lately. There's been so many articles basically bashing the Phantom Menace for bashing Raylos, I suppose. I don't know. The whole trying to set up this dichotomy of leftist trolls and conservative trolls, I don't really get that. I think when you look at the Phantom Menace, uh, a lot of people maybe say that it could like lean conservative. But in reality, it's filled with all types of people, and the Phantom Menace is just a—it's just a group of people that use a hashtag. Uh, there's no like political belief associated with it. But there's also plenty of people I know on the left that are in TFM. There's plenty of people who don't give a crap one way or the other. Very much centrists, and there's other people that are that are that are very right wing, but. They feel like kind of the same way that they just don't want politics in it. It's not like they want they want some conservative marching order or something in their Star Wars. It, they just want a good story and they want to be somewhat respected uh, with their opinions. That's basically it. Um, so it, it's just weird this dichotomy that everyone's trying to set up between basically calling the fandom menace alt right and everyone else, you know, everyone else on the left. Is just completely against whatever TFM stands for. It's weird. It doesn't really make sense to me. But what do you guys think of this article? What do you think of being in the Washington freaking post? Um, I'll actually go ahead and see if I can pull up that article just so you guys can see that it really is 
in the Washington Post. Here we go. I will screen share. Boom. Uh, there it is. This is her tweeting out. Bethany Lassina, right there, associate professor. She studies conflict and ethnicity. And there, look, Washington Post. Uh, but of course, you know, I can't get in there because it wants me to pay. But luckily, I use Internet Archive. So why don't I go ahead and link that Internet Archive <laughs> link in the description below so you can read it for free if you want to. I think I will do that. That sounds like a great idea. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think that this is a, a terrible thing for the fandom medicine? It's in the Washington Post written by this person that's 500 followers on Twitter. Do you think it's the end for the fandom menace? Is this finally an article that takes the fandom menace down? Or do you think that it's just trash, just like all of it. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video out there, ring the bell for notifications, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my PO box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.